the shooting range. In this episode, Pages of History, the amazing French Mirage. Special, meet the glorious Italian fleet and Metal Beasts, the most international fighter in the game. Today, we have a legendary fighter which we named the whole update after. Meet the F-104 Starfighter. The plane was developed by American designers with consideration of the Korean War experience in mind and had already performed its first flight in 1954. The whole five in-game nations get different modifications of the Starfighter. Naturally, the USA, as well as Germany, Japan, Italy and China, who imported it during the 60s. Before we start talking about the differences between them, let's take a closer look at the very first basic model of the series, the F-104A. The aircraft resembles a rocket more than a plane, thanks to its small wings and elongated fuselage. Under the nose cone, we have radar, and behind the pilot's seat, there is a six-barreled 20mm cannon with an astonishing fire rate of 6,000 shots per minute. The powerful General Electric engine not only speeds it up to Mach 2, but also provides for a record-breaking climb of rate. If you accelerate near the ground and then go vertically upwards, the vehicle will cross the 10km mark in just 45 seconds. Its flight performance determines a tactical approach you can rely on speed and climb rate, but should refrain from engaging in dogfights. A plane with such small wings can't be expected to have great maneuverability. In other aspects, the specifics of its combat use will be largely determined by the range of available suspended weapons that differ from one modification to another. For example, the Japanese version of the Starfighter, the F-104J, is effective specifically in air battles thanks to its modern AIM-9E air-to-air -air guided missiles. Attack your targets from above without slowing down so that the enemy doesn't have time to react and launch your missiles at close range. The G modification available in the German aviation tree is good for mixed battles, thanks to the AS-20 Nord guided missiles. If you start climbing at a high angle immediately after appearing in the battle, you'll find yourself above the tank field at an altitude of about 9 or 10 kilometers in just a dozen or so seconds. Not every AA gun will be able to respond to such a maneuver in time. Then you only need to choose a target, dive steeply with no thrust and with enabled air brakes, destroy the enemy vehicles with missiles and go back to high altitude. Finally, the Italian F-104S and the Chinese F-104G are the most versatile. They feel great in both mixed and pure air battles. There are six air-to-air -air missiles in the Italian arsenal against aviation, and although we're talking about the earliest Sidewinders, their technical imperfection is fully compensated by their quantity. Plus, there are bombs against ground tech, seven of them. 750 pounds each. They're certainly more difficult to use than guided missiles, but you'll get used to them after a short practice session. The Chinese aircraft is also not bad if you use it in the same manner. It has four AIM-9J missiles against our targets and our good old friends, the bull pups, against the enemies on the ground. In the early 50s, Marcel Dassault found his company in a situation that could only be described as a crazy race for survival on several tracks at once. Firstly, they competed fiercely against American aircraft manufacturers 
and the prize was the opportunity to stay on the market, and not abroad, but at home, en France, which means in France. The Allies from overseas were literally pushing Dassault and his Ouragan and Mystère out of the game. Secondly, Dassault had to deal with the officials of his own air ministry. Annoyed by the designer's independence, they were constantly taking American vehicles into service, so the Armée de l'Air got both his Mystère and the American Sabres, and the Super Mystère were doubled by the Super Sabres. And thirdly, despite the heat of all the intrigues and rivalries, one couldn't forget about the most important thing, the combat efficiency of the French Air Force. All of that meant that Dassault had to take some risks. Fortunately, he had the right team for that. It was headed by Henri Desplantes, the chief designer of the company, who was ready to make bold and even adventurous decisions. He was a long-time associate of Marcel Dassault on most of his pre-war projects, and he fought his way to escape from a Gestapo prison after the French capitulation. Having joined the resistance, he participated in the Normandy landings as an ordinary paratrooper, and after the war, he left a cushy job in the government at the first call of his former boss and continued his career path as an aircraft designer. He was the one to be Marcel Dassault's right-hand man during the creation of Ouragan and the Mystère. And now, he was the one to tell his boss not to continue the crazy race, <laughs> but to win it. How? Give the fighter of tomorrow a delta wing. It was the only way to ensure sufficient strength and stiffness, considering the wing sweep angles that modern supersonic fighters have already reached. Yes. Nobody has ever done anything like that before, and so what? Monsieur Darceau, somebody has to be first. Oh, and while we're at it, let's get rid of the tailplane. We make this one tailless and lose some extra weight. The air intake on the nose will also have to go. We'll switch it for two of these in the sides, and the nose cone will now have the space to house a radar. You can't have a modern interceptor without it, can you? Monsieur Darceau. Somebody has to be the first. Oh, and while we're at it, let's get rid of the tailplane. We'll make this one tailless and lose some extra weight. The air intake in the nose will also have to go. We'll switch it for two of these in the sides, and the nose cone will now have enough space to house a radar. You can't have a modern interceptor without it, can you? A small team of designers was rapidly carrying out huge amounts of work. The first prototype vehicle was basically just a super mystère with an experimental delta wing. The second one was already a completely new aircraft. And the third one was a full-scale pre-production plane with the latest trends of those years taken into account. And then came news from abroad. In the US, the Convair company was going neck and neck with Dassault developing a fighter with a Delta Wing called the F-106 Delta Dart. Only it was heavier and more expensive. In Sweden, the Draken had already taken off into the sky, and there were also rumors coming from inside the Soviet Union about some new fighter by Mikoyan and Gurievich. But it was already impossible to catch up with Dassault and his designers. The very light fighter called Mirage 3 with its excellent acceleration performance, became one of the best interceptors on the planet by the end of 1955. France became a world leader in aviation, and its military pilots were so excited about the new aircraft that one could forget about even dreaming to get its American counterparts to serve in France. Fun fact, from that moment and to this day, the French Air Force has not accepted a single foreign fighter into service. In addition, the Mirage 3 became the most successful French aircraft on the export market as well, to the great dissatisfaction of its competitors from both sides of the Iron Curtain. During the decades of its service, it acquired a lot of experience and a rich combat history, which we will return to in future episodes. In the meantime, let us remind you that the Mirage 3C 
is one of the most advanced modifications of this formidable war machine, which came into the game just a couple of days ago with the latest major update. Now, you have the opportunity of experiencing for yourself why French pilots would only want to fly this aircraft and nothing else. The Starfighter's update brought into the game not only a series of aircraft and ground-based novelties, but also a fully-fledged Italian naval tech tree. Let's not delay this meeting any longer and look at the most interesting ships out there. So here's the Italian fleet. Where to start and where to aim. The Italian fleet tree is opened by a motor torpedo boat called MAS-555. It is noticeably distinguished from the reserves of other nations thanks to its 20mm cannon. On the same rank we can find MS-53. It's very similar to the German Schnellboats, both externally and in terms of performance. The weaponry is already better than on the reserve boats, two 20mm guns and four torpedoes. Finally, Vosper 70 GIS 811. This MTB is armed with the Flak Vierling 38 turret with four 20mm guns. We've seen a similar one on the German SPAAG called Wiebelwind. It has enough firepower to easily destroy a not too armoured opponent. Opening this second rank is MS-472. On the bow of this MTB, we can see a 40mm Bofus gun effective in both short and medium range combat. Its lack of armour is compensated by mobility, which allows it to keep away from the enemy and at the same time, make it rain on the opponents with gun projectiles. And if you need to fight something bigger, you've got two torpedoes at the stern of the ship. Then we have the MV-661, which is no longer a motor torpedo boat, but a motor gun boat. And the weaponry suits this class. There are six 20mm Breda guns to provide high density of fire. This boat will be most useful in close combat, especially when you are trying to capture a point. But as the range increases, the effectiveness of its weapons drops significantly. The MS-473 is an improved version of the MS-472. The Bofus on the bow is now added as the same weapon on the stern that replaces the torpedoes, which makes the boat an even more dangerous adversary, especially at a distance of 2.5 to 3 kilometers. The Folgore P490 is armed with the same guns, but has twice as many crew members, which significantly increases its survivability. Additional armament of the boat includes four torpedoes, two on each side. Spaviero is a premium hydrofoil MGB with a 76mm automatic gun, the same as on the Italian Automatic anti-aircraft SPG. Its powerful HE rounds can destroy most of the opponents of its class with a few hits, and it's also got SAP shells to fight more armoured ships and HEVT shells against air targets. The second rank ends with the Sayeta P-494. The boat has two 40mm guns with increased fire rate for close and medium range combat. In addition, it has a completely new type of weapon for War Thunder. Anti-ship missiles, allowing you to hit your enemies while remaining out of their reach. On rank 3, we find Corazziere and its premium brother Cenieri, top-class Italian destroyers of Soldati class that you might have encountered during the closed naval testing. Each of them has five 120mm guns, which aren't much different from the weapons on other nations' destroyers. There are armor-piercing options in the ammo in case you need to hit the enemy's ammunition stores, plus six torpedoes with a range of up to 12 kilometers. 
Rank 4 presents us Italy's top light cruiser, Raimondo Montecuccoli. Its armor covers almost all of its length, and there is some deck armor as well, which ensures good protection of the ship's interior space from weak HE rounds and their fragments. The armament is also quite suitable for this class, eight 152mm guns in four turrets. As for the current pinnacle of this tech tree, meet Trento, a heavy cruiser armed with 203mm guns. Once again, the armor belt here covers the ship almost from bow to stern, while the gun turrets are protected with 100mm of rounded armor. In addition to the main caliber guns, there are torpedoes, but don't rely on them too much. The tubes are fixed so you have to aim by turning the whole ship. Despite this inconvenience, there are situations when a successful torpedo launch defines the outcome of the whole battle. Ok, we've made a quick tour over the Italian naval tree, from early reserves to top cruisers. And now, it's time to move on to answering your questions that you ask in the comments. The first question was sent by a player called Troy Russell. Need Abrams' intro back? Well, it's quite possible that we'll be changing the intro tanks from time to time, so at some point the Abrams might very well come back. Smoor writes, Why do solid shot AP rounds cause ammunition explosion death? We've already answered a similar question some time ago, but since you keep asking, We'll answer it one more time. Even if you take a round without a single gram of explosives whatsoever, it will still contain quite a powerful gunpowder charge that's supposed to propel it outside the barrel and towards the target. And if these charges explode, the impact will be more than enough to incapacitate the crew of the tank. Then there's a question sent by Bizdak Tawana. What will happen if you dive bomb in supersonic? <laughs> well, it depends on what aircraft you're piloting at the moment. For example, if you use the F-104, then the bomb will be dropped anyway. It will fly towards the target at supersonic speed, and then the air will gradually slow it down. And if we're talking about the Phantom, for example, then the ejection mechanism simply won't work. This aircraft can only drop bombs at subsonic speeds. T. Boons comes with this question. Why is the USA thermal green and the Soviet and German white? Hello there. It, it's not about nations, it's uh, about the devices themselves. The simplest night vision devices based on image intensifiers have a green screen and a corresponding picture and the black and white indicator means that this is a thermal site that shows the infrared radiation coming from heated objects. And the last message for today was written by John Domingue. Please do a Metal Beasts on Merkava. I'll subscribe if you do. <laughs> well, thanks for the suggestion. We won't promise to do it right away, though. First, we need to tell our viewers about the main novelties of the recent update. But we do like this tank a lot as well. And we definitely review it in Metal Beasts someday. Ok, that's it for today. You've been watching The Shooting Range by Gaijin Entertainment, which premieres every Sunday at 4pm, that's 1600, or noon Eastern Time. That's 12 noon, guys. I ask you to subscribe to the channel, click that bell, leave a like and tell us what you think about the new update in the comments below. So long until next week. <laughs>